This video is sponsored by Floki. 851 grams. FYI to everyone. My name is Catherine Cordova and I am a pianist and an arranger on YouTube. I recently passed 100,000 subscribers and I said I would do a Q&A video, so here it is. I'm also going to go over why I think I've improved a lot in the last couple of years. So before I start, I just want to say that this is really amazing. Some of you might know that my dad has been terminally ill the last couple of years, and it means the world to me that I was able to reach this milestone and tell him in person. So, thanks. Also, some of you seem to think that I'm a professional pianist. I'm not. This is just something that I've been doing as a side hobby for many years now. The fact that I can play piano for so many people all across the world who enjoy it means a lot to me. This is the best part of my life. So thank you all for being a huge part of it and helping me keep going with this. I've also set up a Patreon account if any of you would like to support me. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so first question. I don't remember how old I was when I started playing piano, so I'm gonna guess and say five or six. I never had a formal introduction to piano. I didn't take lessons. I don't know much theory. My brother actually just introduced me to the keys on the piano and would write the notes down in sheet music. And that's how I would learn songs because I don't know how to read sheet music. That's basically how I started. One of the first songs I learned was Right Here Waiting by Richard Marks, a very classic piano song. Another one was the theme song from Titanic. I actually played that in front of my school when I was little and I made some kids cry. Yeah, that was cool. And then I, I played for a few years, but I went through a period where I played little to nothing. And it wasn't until my music taste went through this shift and I got really into Coldplay's music. I wanted to learn how to play their songs on piano. So I started teaching myself how to play their songs by ear. Around this time, I had come back from a trip from the Philippines and I wanted to show a friend of mine a video that I took when I was there. And she said to me, have you heard of YouTube? It's this site and you can upload videos there for free. So I made an account that was back in 2006. While I was on the site, I saw some users were uploading videos of themselves playing Coldplay songs on piano. I thought, I can play Coldplay songs on piano. I'm gonna upload a video. So I did. Me playing The Scientist by Coldplay on piano. That was my very first piano cover that I uploaded. And uh, quite a classic YouTube title for its time, I think. And yeah, I've just kept going ever since. But I would say piano and YouTube were never the main focus in my life. YouTube was a very different place back then. I focused on finishing school, going to university. I ended up getting a degree in chemistry and I got a full-time job as a chemist, which I'm still doing. I would like to put more time into my YouTube channel, so we'll see how things go. When I'm choosing my next song to cover, there's a few factors that I consider. One is if I like the song. I think playing music that I like has kept my interest up in playing piano all these years, so really important. Number two, um, I try to incorporate songs that are newer releases for better exposure. And three, if the song presents some sort of challenge to me. And that can mean one of two things. Either it's a difficult, intricate piece that's just gonna be a real challenge for me to learn, or the challenge lies in arranging the song in a way that's different compared to how other people have played it. There's a lot of pianists on YouTube who are doing the same thing as me, and I think trying to find ways to stand out is, is pretty important. I have a good sense of relative pitch. I can tell if a note is higher or lower than another, and I think I have a good sense of the intervals between notes. How I learn a song by ear is I'll take the melody, I kind of sing it out loud, and then I just find the notes on the piano to match it up. Then I do the same with the bass, and then I fill it in with some harmony if it's needed. That's pretty much it. 
The amount of time it takes me to arrange a song varies a lot. It can be anywhere between a couple hours to several days. Learning the song out by ear, the melody, the bass, doesn't take me very long. What takes longest is dressing up the arrangement. I like to compare arranging songs on piano to solving puzzles. And it's a puzzle that can have many different solutions to, but some solutions might sound a little better than others. There is a difference between playing a song on piano and having somebody say, yeah, that's how that song sounds like on piano to that's how that song feels on piano. My older videos are a good example of this. If you watch some of my older arrangements, you can see that I've been able to go from this to this. And also this. audio quality aside, you can see that my older arrangements are quite basic. I lacked a lot of skill to be expressive, and in the past I also tried to just arrange a song as quickly as I could, which was very limiting, and now I take my time. I don't really care how long it takes me to do a song. I just want to be able to present a song in the best way that I possibly can with my current skills. I get most of my inspiration from the song itself. I think that music is so closely tied to our emotions and the reason why we like a song is because it makes us feel a certain way. When I play a song, if I don't feel anything from it, then I don't think that it's worth uploading. I think being able to capture how a song feels and what its main identity is, is really key to helping it resonate with whoever is going to be listening to it. I ask myself what are some characteristic elements of that song that make people like it. And that can be one of a few things. I think it's important to preserve the original dynamics of the song. If it's a quiet piano section, like the intro to Titanic, I don't think there's a need to over embellish that. The beauty lies in playing those parts quite delicately, so it's best to leave that as it is. Rhythm. Sometimes a song has a distinctive rhythm. You can capture this on piano by accenting certain notes to mimic the drum or rhythm line. In doing that, you make the piano sound a lot more percussive. I try to capture as many elements in the original song as I can, whether that's a backing riff playing with a melody line on top and then maybe there's some other instruments playing. I try to incorporate as much as I can into my piano solo. And sometimes, if a song is used in television or in film, it helps me to watch and see how that song was used for inspiration. Running Up That Hill is a perfect example of this. When I was arranging it, I wanted the chorus to sound rousing and encouraging to the listener because I feel like that's the main message of the song. But then I came up with this The problem was the rhythm of that doesn't match up with the first half of the song. So either I completely rearrange how I arranged the first half of the song, but then I didn't want to lose that chorus. I felt like it doesn't need to be touched anymore. So I thought I could put it after the come on baby section, but was still concerned that the rhythm change would be jarring to the listener. So I slept on it and eventually I decided to just keep it there because this arrangement is um, based on that scene in Stranger Things, which is more cinematic and there can be kind of different sections in the song. As long as I end the first section on like a bass note and there's like a change in dynamics as well, it kind of tells the listener that we're in a new section. Greatest decision ever, because what happens in the second half of the song is that it directly parallels that scene in Stranger Things. When I hear this played, it sounds eerie, like something ominous is about to happen. This matches up with when Max is in the Upside Down and she's caught by Vecna, they have this dialogue going, and as a viewer, you're watching this and thinking something is about to happen. Her friends in the real world then start playing her rescue song, which is Running Up That Hill. She's able to escape and she starts running towards them. In my arrangement, the final chorus is then played, 
but it's different than the first two. It's bigger, it covers a wider range in keys, and the dynamics and the rhythm have increased to match with Max running for her life. She narrowly escapes, and at the end of the chorus we hit this chord that leaves us in tension, wanting to be released. We get that relief with the following two chords, and this is paired with a change in dynamics to stretch out that sense of relief. The outro then plays, which of course is played in the end credits of the episode, which to me sounds like a reflective what just happened here. And that's how I arranged running up that hill. Could I have arranged it that way if I didn't watch Stranger Things? Probably not. I think Kate Bush's song, while good, it kind of stays relatively flat. There's a bit of bumps at the chorus and the bridge. But what Stranger Things did with the song was give it a wider range for me to work with. One of my best arrangements so far. Thank you, Billboard and Classic FM for writing articles about that. It was good, very good. I don't remember everything that I've played, but I remember the songs, mostly. Some songs I play more often. I had somebody ask me if I have uh, comfort pieces. I'd say these ones are probably it. I like playing them because they remind me of what I'm capable of doing. So I just want to take a moment to acknowledge this video's sponsor, Floki. Floki is an app available for use on mobile and web that helps you learn how to play songs you love on piano. They've got thousands of songs available to learn, organized by skill level. You can actually search my name and see that some of my older arrangements are available on Floki to learn. I've since forgotten how to play my version of Waiting for Love by Avicii, but I can use Floki to easily learn it again. Floki teaches with a wait mode feature. It shows you how to play each note and checks if you play along correctly. You can even choose to learn a new song one hand at a time. They also have a variety of courses to teach you how to become a better piano player. Best of all, they've got a free seven day trial. So if you guys are interested, start learning today with the link in the description. I don't play any other instruments, but I would like to. I bought a guitar a couple years ago, an acoustic one, and I played it for a day. Went to bed, woke up in the middle of the night, and my face was unbearably itchy. It was like a burning itch. Eventually, I found out that the frets in acoustic guitars contain nickel. I am really, really allergic to nickel. So no more guitar for me. It's not worth to get it refretted unless I knew it was my forever guitar. So I think I'm just gonna stick to piano, guys. So fun fact, guess what the silver play button is made of? nickel um, according to the internet so I actually did a nickel test I have a little kit that tests for nickel if it turns pink then there's traces of nickel in it and there was a bit of pink on this guy so that's why I was wearing gloves in some of those shots trying to limit my contact with it but good thing I can just leave it on there and not touch it again so My gold watch, this used to belong to my grandmother. Unfortunately, I can't ask her where she got it because she passed away a couple years ago now. It just says Celebrity Watch International and there's no model name. Fortunately, if you Google celebrity and watch, you're just gonna get a bunch of hits of celebrities with their watches on, so sorry it can't help. If anybody finds uh, the model, I'd be interested in knowing. I don't do practice exercises, maybe I'm not a good example. I kind of warm up my hands before I play. I just blow into my hands. And like, I mainly do this because if I had just washed my hands and I start playing, it helps with grip. I, I practice certain pieces for certain techniques. I like to play Edelweiss to practice tempo and dynamics changes. Um, I like to play Vanny Adams to kind of practice octaves and just kind of movement. And I, I like playing that one to kind of feel the piano out. I am not 100% sure what neoclassical means. I think genres get tossed around a lot, but yes, I do listen to instrumental piano music. One of my favorites right now is a pianist named Sofiane Pamar. He is 
a pianist from France and he combines rap, hip hop with piano, which is a really cool sound. Google says he's a neoclassical pianist, so we'll go with him. My advice for somebody starting piano, I, I had a difficult time working on my dynamics and that's something that I'm still working on. And I think playing a keyboard that only had lightly weighted keys really held me back. I would really recommend making sure you're playing on a piano that has fully weighted keys if you're looking at a digital piano and has graded action, which means the bass notes are heavier than the treble notes up top. I think switching over to this digital piano helped me become a lot more expressive over time. Nobody's given me specific advice. I've never had a teacher. I don't know many musicians. But I might like to change that. I think it'd be cool to collaborate with some other musicians one day. But I think being on YouTube has helped me improve a lot through the comments that I get and the fact that YouTube is basically a catalog of all the performances I've ever played. Sometimes I watch an older video and I hear mistakes that I didn't hear before. And sometimes I listen to something and think, you know, I would arrange this quite differently now. I find myself saying that a lot more now, actually. But if I had to choose an actual person, I would have to go with my husband, Simon. He is the most supportive person behind my whole YouTube career. He's just constantly trying to find ways for me to challenge myself as a musician. In 2018, Music Notes reached out to me saying they were interested in having my arrangements up on their website. But I didn't know how to read sheet music, let alone write it. And I remember thinking at the time that this feels like it's going to be taking a lot more of my time and effort than it's worth. It just felt super daunting to learn how to do all those things. But Simon encouraged me to start learning some music theory. We started watching this YouTuber named Michael New. I actually forgotten a lot of what he's taught me, but um, yeah. What I do remember though is he, he taught me how to tell the key a song is in as well as its time signature, which is probably the most important things. I transcribed my first sheet music, which was Mystery of Love, and Simon helped transcribe that with me actually. A few years ago, he also encouraged me to kind of rotate through different kinds of songs, whether that's like classics and like challenge songs that were Stromae's Papa Ute, Coldplay Arabesque, just songs that like you really don't think someone could play that on piano, but I think they turned out really well and those are some of my favorite arrangements that I've ever done now. Let me show you this thing that he wrote. He like made me a sort of textbook. Different time signatures, examples of songs in those time signatures. And we got the major modes. He also wrote me a program that randomly gives me a musical constraint, whether that's a time signature, a mode, some kind of mood, or a combination of those things. That was to help me, give me ideas when composing music. And I didn't tell him to do any of this, okay? He just did it on his own time because I don't know, he loves me, I guess. But anyways, all this to say that these things all have something in common. And that is, they are things that made me feel uncomfortable. I can learn a song by ear pretty easily, but if I'm only doing that, then I'm not gaining anything from it at this point. I've been doing that for years. Finding ways to make myself challenged will hopefully make me become a better pianist, a better arranger, and a better musician overall. I feel like I'm a completely different musician compared to what I was like five years ago, even three years ago, of like different. And I hope you all agree. Um, hopefully it shows. Fun fact, all the music that's played in this video, it's, it's, it's played by me, it's by me, some of it. And um, hopefully it's cool. I've wasted a lot of time on this video, as you can tell, and uh, <laughs> Because he made me. You don't need any like free samples. Like you could just do it yourself. Well, I hope you enjoyed it though. I, I have to stop now and get back to playing piano. <laughs> um, 
What song is it gonna be? You're gonna have to subscribe and find out. Thanks, guys. It's a weird moment. You wait so long for it to happen and then it does and it's like, yeah, it's just a matter of time before it does happen and then it's here and then it's just another day. Mm-hmm.